So again, um, my name is Tony White and I'm the National Outreach and Engagement Specialist for the Fletcher Group. And um, we're gonna be talking about the, uh, just giving a presentation about recovery housing that works. As the Fletcher Group's National Outreach and Engagement Specialist, <clears throat> I work with subject matter experts within our company to provide rural communities with the technical support and assistance needed to combat the opioid epidemic. My goal today is to introduce you to a proven recovery housing model that is not only safe and effective, but also affordable and sustainable. There's a growing consensus that treatment rather than punishment is the way to go. But providing treatment within a safe and nurturing environment can be challenging, especially in rural areas where there may be, uh, you know, high drug usage and few resources, expensive travel requirements, and debilitating stigma in communities where everyone knows everyone else. The Fletcher Group believes that a safe, stable place to live is the first and most important piece in the recovery puzzle. That's because recovery is virtually impossible without it. Unfortunately, recovery housing is prone to chaos, confusion, and waste. You may have heard about what's called a patient brokering and other corrupt practices that have stolen millions of dollars from desperate families trying to save loved ones. And if you've tried on your own to secure recovery housing, you know how difficult it can be to find funding. But we do have a way here. My company, the Fletcher Group, was founded in 2017 to extend a nationwide successful Recovery Kentucky model launched by our founder, Ernie Fletcher. He was a governor in Kentucky. In 2019, we were, allowed, we were awarded a three-year HRSA grant to form the Rural Center of Excellence, with which to provide rural communities with the technical assistance needed to build safe and sustainable recovery housing. A unique approach, what might be called recovery model within a, a housing model, provides residents with a full continuum of evidence-based care over a long period of time in a safe, non-punitive, peer-driven environment. Typical stays are around seven months, but clients can stay as long as two years and are welcome back if they have a, a recurrence. We closely collaborate with the leading players in the recovery housing industry, including Hazleton Betty Ford Foundation, the National Association of County and City Health Officials, the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials, and the National Alliance for Recovery Residences. We've been on the radar, radar of industry leading organizations and thought leaders for quite some time. In addition to SAMHSA's endorsement, we've been applauded by many others, including the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. So what does Recovery Kentucky model look like? At the centers we help build, recovery is a peer-driven and addresses substance use disorders, dependency, poverty, criminality, with an emphasis on accountability. All outcomes are documented. Recovery also includes an employment component with training and work and life skills to ensure that those leaving the program have the kind of meaningful employment essential to lasting recovery. Here are some key statistics regarding those who enter the facility. As you can see, many arrive through the criminal justice system. So we've got 72.7% from referrals and uh, average age is 33 years. Average length to say is seven, seven and a half months. Um, 
38% of it reported uh, homelessness upon entry, 52% are males and 48% are females. Um, for that, that waiting list time, um, two to three months, but the, you know, the grade is, the need is great. Now let's take a look at some outcomes. Recovery Kentucky is the only program we know that has had its outcomes documented in detail for nine consecutive years. As done by Kipra, the Kentucky Injury and Prevention Research Prevention Center at the University of Kentucky. And um, as you can see from the um, at intake with the legal drug use, 41%, and it's gone down to 8% a year later. Uh, opioid use at 68% upon admittance and admission, and uh, a year later down to 4%. Um, homelessness, again, as we saw on the previous slide, it intake 38%, and a year later down to 5%. Uh, these are um, some incredible outcomes and shows the, uh, is definitely a, um, a defining factor and shows the strength of the peer-led, peer-driven social model, the democratically run system. And, um, you know, as you can see at the, you know, for every dollar spent using national es estimates of the cost of substance abuse and applying them to the clients, Substance use before and after the program participation, there was estimated $2.56 return and avoided costs for every dollar invested in providing recovery services. This is, you know, savings to the Department of Corrections, savings to um, emergency room visits, uh, savings to um, the lack of uh, EMS intervention or police and for inter intervention the uh, the lower cost of you know having someone and having a man or a woman with a substance use disorder that's within the program um, receiving um, high quality lower cost services and that require less case management um, you know for uh, Little sidebar Department of Corrections, the probation and parole office. There's a probation and parole officer that is attached to each one of the centers. And there may be a lot of people on their caseloads, but the um, they're just easier caseloads to manage because as the men and women go through the process and the probation and parole officer see their growth, um, and they're just they're just more compliant and, and eager and willing. Here, and uh, let's see here, we've got, uh, again, total and the, the type of money that can be saved, you know, the cost of um, drug and alcohol abuse for, recover, for the ACOP recovery center outcome study clients at intake and the cost of drug and alcohol abuse for the recovery center outcome study clients at follow-up and um, you know the, the aggregate cost reduction in society after participation in one of the centers these are some pictures of, uh, of some of the centers there's a, a total of 14 centers um, that are uh, there are five congressional districts throughout the state, and uh, you know Governor Fletcher mandated uh, that there be built. It was originally set up to, for ten centers to be built, and they built one men's center, one women's center in each of the five congressional districts, and the success rates were so high. About I think it was four to five years later, they said well, that we need to build four more. So there's a total of 14 of the Recovery Kentucky centers um, with similar uh, architecture and living environment throughout the state. And the, um, the model was originated in Louisville, Kentucky in the late 80s and at the, at the healing place in Louisville. And then in the early mid 90s, it was replicated at the Hope Center at a, and they're, they're really all based off of a, 
the core function was to serve the to serve the homeless um, who suffer suffer from substance use disorders or those that were marginally housed who suffered some from substance use disorders. And so the the, the core um, drive to create these centers was to serve the homeless. And so um, yeah, I've I've heard on I'm more than one. I'm, I'm a, a former facilitator of one of the recovery Kentucky, of two of the recovery Kentucky centers, and you know I've had the privilege of uh, hearing men say, uh, you know, wow, man, this is this is the nicest place I've ever lived before, and um, you know these these nice environments. It really uh, goes to says a lot to the participants and the residents that that the state. The people who have funded the model, those that have backed it, those who are advocates for recovery, those are, who are um, seeking to provide services and resources for those that are seeking their recovery um, to provide such a, a fantastic living environment and, and spirit. Uh, it can be, it, it's a, a huge, um, resource and it, it really speaks a lot to um, the community spirit and the, the willingness of people uh, to help uh, those who suffer from substance use disorders. So, you know what, you know, do facilities like this make a difference? In our experience, yes, they do. And here are some uh, some quotes from some of the clients, uh, the program changed me. I now have the tools to say sober. They truly care about me and want me to have a fruitful and productive future. I have a job now and I can see my child. It saved my life. It's totally life changing. You can see here the three goals we hope to accomplish with any partner. Keep in mind, we do not build or own the facilities ourselves. We provide for free the technical assistance that can help you negotiate the terrain, work your way through bureaucratic hoops, and come out the other end with high quality, debt free facility that will serve your community for decades to come. And housing, the capacity, and the pride. That winds up for my presentation for today. Of course, I have many more details to share with you if you're interested. Here's my contact information if you don't already have it. And thank you for so much for your interest and participation. Take care. Uh, Morgan, Morgan, do you have any questions? Or, I hope I didn't go through all that too fast. So, Wanted to leave a time open for if you had any questions. Yeah, thank you so much for that information. Um, and I'm sorry if you hear uh, noises here. I'm just feeding a baby right now. So <laughs> um, it's all right. I get it. Well, yeah. multi everybody's multitasking. <laughs> um, so we, I think we actually had contact with maybe Karen. Um, last year, I think, our staff person. Um, I'm a board member of a group in Wyoming County in the southern part of West Virginia, um, and we currently don't have a staff person. <laughs> uh, we lost her, um, but I'm, you know, be, I am interested in, in what you guys do and in the model, and so I'll probably just uh, maybe reach out to Karen by email would probably, sounds like maybe the best thing to do. That'd be fantastic, yes. Karen? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, but Tony did manage two facilities um, of, the, of the Recovery Kentucky Centers. Uh, so if you have questions around management of, you know, how you manage the facilities and uh, people coming in or staff, uh, he is an excellent contact to ask if you have any questions about that right now. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, I can't think of anything specific right off. But, okay. Um, but yeah, it's all really good information. Thank you. And I can always connect you back with him when you're at that point or you have those questions that, you know, 
inevitably I won't be able to answer because I don't have that experience or background, but sure. uh, Tony, Tony is our, uh, our expert in that area. Yeah. And um, he's working right now with um, a group in uh, Morgantown uh, doing the recovery house management training. So uh, we have those types of things we can offer as well. Okay. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. All right. Well, let's uh, we'll go ahead and close this session. It's a little bit early, but uh, I'll give you your time back, Morgan, and I'll give you your time back, Tony. And uh, I thank you all very much uh, and appreciate uh, your interest in Fletcher Group. And if uh, you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. And we look forward to uh, the next meeting, which is around, uh, which will be Jennifer White. And she's uh, talking about the um, uh, family and mother-daughter recovery center. So, or mother-daughter, <laughs> mother-children uh, recovery centers. So thank you very much. Thanks again, Morgan. Have a great day. Thanks. You all too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.